Good evening, campers. It's me, Kieran. And a few weeks ago, I was approached by the lovely and wonderful team over at Infinity Land Press, who are an indie publisher based in London. Now, I've reviewed Infinity Land Press works before, such as Audrey Sash's Tears of a Commissar Girl, of which I'll leave a link down below. And I have bought this lovely book of his, Heliogabalus by Antonin. Our toe. We, we, that was a ride. That was a ride in and of itself, wasn't it? Let's be honest, Kieran. Segwaying from that, and let's set the tone here. Infinity Land Press are interested in the transgressive. They're not doing normal, commonplace, traditional works. They really do push people to the limits. And as someone who wants to read outside their comfort zone, I find the catalog of Infinity Land Press will will do that. They watched my previous review, and we've been having wonderful conversation back and forth. So when they said, would I like to read Spaniels by Yuka Sikala, which is translated from the Finnish, I said, yes, I'll give it a go. And they said that it was a slim novella, so it shouldn't take too much of my time. And I, and I read this in one day. <laughs> I wasn't expecting a book to end with a Blumpkin, and I never thought I would mention Blumpkins upon this channel, but a Blumpkin does as a Blumpkin do. Yuka Zikala's work is embodied within the sexual. Is it sexual per se? Maybe. Is it erotic per se? Maybe. And is it pornography per se? Maybe. Sakala really blends and merges all these experiences and expectations and almost turns them on their head. And we're going to talk about what Spaniels means later on. Yuka Sakala is a cult Finnish artist. He's not ever been one to break into the mainstream. Within his monographic static nausea, within the foreword, it's implied that Sakala wants to reject that. He wants to stay true to himself and by doing that has almost pushed himself away from the centre which everyone wants to be. Similar to Invisibility and Manifesto by Audrey Sash, who has become one of my favourite authors. Sikala blends violence and sex in a way that that grotesques it, but grotesques it in a way not by making it body horror. There's nothing Cronenbergian about this, just in the mere act of what is being done, he obscures it. Being a voyeur to it makes it come across as something that is so alien, that is so perverse, that you shouldn't really be engaging within the work. Now, Sakala is fully aware of this. Evidently, Sakala is invested within this topic and through any medium of his work is bound to come up. And again, it's not going to be for everyone. Now, I've been on the internet long enough to know the heightened expectations and hyperbole runs riot. So when I say this isn't for everyone, I thought I would put a metric towards it. So I asked people over on my Instagram if they would be interested in watching something that is clearly not safe for work, if they would consent to then filming themselves are giving me their raw reaction to Sakala's work. And somehow people said yes, like way more than I was expecting. I hear their reactions now. Hello, I'm Bob the Booker. Hello, everybody. Hello, my name is Joe. Hi, uh, I'm Holly. Hi, Victoria from Sunshine is Sexy, 27, poet, teacher, educator. Me and Kieran actually worked together in a previous job, and he's an absolute delight. Kieran. <laughs> Kieran, everyone's favorite booktuber slash sadist. Okay, so Kieran told me to open this YouTube video and blind react to it. I've been told that it's not safe for work. Um, and I'm, I've been told I can't show any of the visuals or the audio from it. I'm a little nervous. I want to preface this. I am in an old woman's house. This is my great aunt's house. Don't think I'm emotionally prepared. <laughs> I'm gonna watch this and then go to bed. I'm genuinely worried. This is what I'm faced with here. So this is called human porridge and I'm not entirely sure if I want to know why. <laughs> human porridge. 
That's a visual. The word human porridge now scares me. I don't like the name of this. Human porridge to me it just sounds like a really bad discharge day. <laughs> this video may be inappropriate. Ooh. Music. Very poor quality. Um, a lot of... Uh, a lot of fuzzy bits and jump cuts. In black and white and shot as if it's kind of in like the Blair Witch Project. I love as well like the CD vibe that you get from like old video cameras. Like the way it catches the light. And now it's all gone red. Ah, and now there's a piano, okay. Piano, the whispering was a little uneasy in my heart. <laughs> you know when you get paranoid that uh, it's blaring out? This is not something that you want blaring out. God, the noise is. <laughs> I was a little bit afraid this was what this was going to be. Really not sure how this is ever making it past any kind of guidelines on YouTube, let's be honest. Kieran, why? Why do you... What are you up to? <laughs> I don't understand the context. I'm a camera in someone's, like, colonoscopy. Moving through the bowels. What's happening? Is this, like, some weird take on pornography? You see, I can't do that. I feel like I'll never quite be the same after this, and I don't think that's a good thing. Sometimes art goes too far. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Hello. You are from Spain, right? I'm not from Spain, no. That's fantastic! Yes. But that is fantastic! It sure is fantastic. Do you know in Re Rebecca Black's Friday, like, do you know there are those two, like, um, her two friends who are like, you could tell, like, practice for about five minutes before it went on and they kind of just do their little, like, their little dance like this. Kind of that happening in a club. Um, oh, I think we're back to the sexy times now. This is wild. Why does it look like it's decaying? What is going on? Probably, like, 90s, like, disco beats. Yes, so what's the, uh, what am the point? A light pornographic film, one could say? Um, I guess if it was full porter. Oh. Oh. Wow. What? Oh. Oh my, scared me. <laughs> well, as Cheryl Crow says, if it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. No, pause. Please pause. Please pause. Ah! More penis than I was expecting would be on YouTube. <laughs> this is on YouTube. This is funny. Yeah, it's getting a little bit more and more disturbing as it goes along, not gonna lie. I think I understand. Um, this house will never be the same. Really hope my parents don't walk in at this moment. I feel like this might be quite a lot. I'm watching this in my hotel room. <laughs> don't worry about me. Like you just get an idea of what's going on and then it shuffles. Oh, okay. So I think someone's like a vagina owner is like on top of the man. Oh no, is that a woman? Oh, I'm so confused. I feel like at this point I was expecting to be a little bit more used to it. Um, like for it to kind of almost cease to, um, to have any real impact, but no, that's not happening. Do you know what it sounds like? You know when you're in the changing rooms of a swimming pool and you can hear the sounds in the swimming pool, but it's sort of like echoey and distant, like, <laughs> it's like, oh, great, they're older ladies, great. Older people have sex, absolutely. Fantastic. That's a big penis. <laughs> This is reminding me of um, doing a COVID test, lateral flow test. Can they put this on YouTube? <laughs> we just had, um, is this burning an eternal flame? So nice to see some bangles representation for, um, for this. Fun fact, I do believe it was the song that was number one when I was born. Now no longer want that to ever that song to ever be associated with me again. Thank you very much uh, after <laughs> this video. <laughs> This isn't the most pleasant thing I've ever watched, I have to say. No problem, pun, as long as it's uh, ethical. Someone's jizzing on tits, great. So I'm never having sex again. Uh, <laughs> I, think I'm, I think I've been put off for life. It's just like, it's just so poorly made. Like that's the offensive part about this whole thing. Well, that was um, informative, educational, and, um, and downright right weird. I do regret. I regret offering to do this with you, Karen. I can appreciate the thought and technique around the editing and the music and the creation of that. I will say that I didn't get a, there wasn't a visceral reaction from me. It's kind of interesting to look at though. 
Wow. An experience. I'm gonna guess that there's an artistic point going on here. Something along the lines of like, like consumerism and like women's bodies. Cause there seems to be a lot of that, of like price tags put on things and like a lot of showing like really graphic stuff. Um, but then it, it, it kind of, I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into that. It might have just been someone getting getting their rocks off. What have I witnessed? I am not sure. I feel like human porridge is like, that's the correct title. Kieran, you never cease to surprise me. But Kieran, you're fucked, man. And I love it. Firstly, can I say, I'm absolutely baffled how many people came forward saying, yes, Kieran, I'll watch something with absolutely no context apart from that it's 18 plus and not safe for work. How does that even happen? But what is going to happen is I'm giving away a copy of Spaniels by Yuka Sakala over on the Booker Boy Book Club Discord. I said to the coffee supporters, if you want to have a copy of this book, I'll, I'll send this one out to you. And here is the winner! I haven't, I haven't done it yet in real time, but hey, you're gonna get this copy along with this lovely bookmark. Isn't that great? Spaniel, similar to people's reactions when they watch Human Porridge, is very disorientating, at times fluid, at times sharp and jagged. The cuts between this person, this man, that's all we really get of our protagonist, walks through Finland, engaging with people, fantasizing, talking about art, engaging with people. There is something, as a reader, you don't feel in tune. You almost feel adjacent to the text as you're trying to understand what is happening. Now, the man within this has a perception, has a stereotype that we as the reader are going to fall on. We're going to understand who he is based on what he does, how he speaks, and the acts that he is embroiled with. Of the limited information that Sakala provides the reader of the protagonist, which we're going to use as a key to unlock who this person is, we fall onto the protagonist's own understanding of who he is. He views himself as a Doberman, someone territorial, someone vicious, someone willing to attack if provoked. It's a very masculine image that he himself provides and that is what he pins himself down to. That's the person he wants to be. He wants to be the person who bites the hand that feeds. Where we get the title Spaniels is the the external what he thinks he is giving out, what he thinks he is, is actually not the case. Yes, there is some mild terror and there's some mild violence, if provoked to some degree, but compared to the Doberman, the Spaniel has absolutely no chance. Who the man thinks he is, what he thinks he is betraying himself as, moving within these transgressions, something that we feel he is accustomed to. There's a question in there. Is he doing it for bravado? Is he doing it for the show? Is he doing it because we expect him to do this based on the patterns that Sakala has created within the first 10 pages? Is it our own understanding or maybe our naivety that suspects he is the way that he is. Who in fact is it that dictates our image? Are we just being led along a path? Are we trying to sniff out our true individual self? Or in fact is it a dogma that people go through? The Carla's novella is a fever dream set on the cold snowy Finnish streets but resigns itself to empty apartments looking to cast a light on those who would rather stay in the dark. Thank you ever so much for Infinity Land Press for reaching out for allowing me to review this, please do check out this amazingly unique indie press. I'll leave a link down below. It's not an affiliate link, so peruse and buy at your pleasure. They've been nothing but outstanding. I would love to send a bit of love their way. And again, thank you for the people who have joined the Booker Boy Book Club, who as always will keep international giveaways 
free forever. Thank you ever so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.